Hi there guys, this is Simon from Ivy Audio, and in this episode of Scripting with Simon, I'll be talking about creating knobs and sliders. In a previous video, I did skinning a button, and in this video, I'll be talking about sliders. The process is very similar, uh, except of course for a knob, you have many more frames than you do for a button. For a button, you have six frames for the six different states the button can be in. For a slider, you'll have anywhere between maybe 30 or a couple hundred frames, depending on how big your slider needs to be. So here I have a knob that I created very quickly inside of Photoshop. It has three layers. We have this black background, which is mostly just a reference. We have this gray sort of ring around the edge, which I just called background. And we have this, it's not actually a rectangle, let's call this the actual knob. Uh, and this is gonna be the part that rotates like this. So to create a sprite sheet from this, I use a plugin called Sheeta, which is a plugin for After Effects. It basically allows you to animate your knob however you like, and then export every frame of the animation inside of a sprite sheet. So let's go ahead and open up After Effects. Okay, let's go ahead and close this and grab the knob that I created earlier, drop it right in. And After Effects is going to ask us whether we want to import the merged layers or an individual layer. Well, I want this layer here, the one that we can see now, to rotate, but I don't want this layer to rotate, so I'm going to import the two layers separately. First, let's grab the background layer, merge layer styles, that's fine, hit OK. And then we're going to drop the knob in again, and this time we're going to import the knob layer. Now we can come into our timeline, grab both of these, and drop them right into the timeline. can leave all these settings to default, we're going to play with them later anyway. So After Effects creates a new composition for us that is the correct dimensions, and you see our two layers are positioned correctly just as they were inside the Photoshop document, so that's quite nice of them. And now we're ready to set up some keyframes, create our animation, and export every frame of that animation inside of a sprite sheet. First we need to set up our composition so that it has the frame rate and length so that we'll get the correct number of frames in our finished animation. When we drag these two into the timeline, After Effects automatically created this composition called Knob. You can see it's a composition because it's got the little composition icon next to it instead of the Photoshop icon. We're just going to right click that and hit Composition Settings. Right now the frame rate is set to 90 frames per second and it's 2 seconds long. So if we export this using Sheeta, it'll give us a 180 frame animation. And that seems like a bit of overkill, so I'm just going to change this to be one second long, so that we'll only get 90 frames in our finished animation. There we go. Now we can set up our keyframe so that the knob actually rotates. Uh, Keyframing, it's really very simple, just next to whatever layer you want to rotate. In this case, I want to rotate the knob layer. Click the little drop down arrow until you get all of these options, position, scale, rotation. You want to come to the very start of your composition and tick the little stopwatch next to rotation, and this will create a keyframe. That little diamond there is an After Effects keyframe. We can type in whatever angle we want. Let's do negative 135 degrees. There we go. And we're going to drag the scrubber right out to the end of the composition and create another keyframe at positive 135 degrees. Now if we scrub through the timeline, we get our nice knob animation, which is now ready to be exported. The download link for Sheeta should be on screen right now, and if you've downloaded it and installed it correctly, to run it, all you need to do is go to File, Scripts, Run Script File, and it will be right there, ready for you to run. Uh, this is the default folder where you typically put custom script files for After Effects, and that's where the Sheeta documentation instructs you to install it, so it should be there. Just going to double click Sheeta.jsx, and here there's just a couple options we need to worry about. By default, Sheeta will look like this, uh, and if we save this sprite sheet, it'll generate a square sprite sheet with an equal number of rows and columns, which is totally useless for us because Contact can only read linear sprite sheets. So we need to tick this distrib box and set either columns or rows equal to one so that we'll get only one row or only one column, which can then be read by contact. We can now hit save sprite sheet. 
and save it to the location of our choosing. I'm going to drop it into this folder here. By default, Sheeta will attempt to include how many rows and columns are in the sprite sheet, but I found that can cause some issues with rendering, so I'm just going to call this knob sprite.png. Hit save, and we get the nice After Effects rendering noise. And we're all done. If we take a look in this folder, here's our sprite sheet that I saved. And we have our 90 frames of glorious knob animation. That's all there is to it, really. Uh, I'm sure there are other ways to do it. There are definitely different, maybe better methods. But I found, especially since Photoshop and After Effects integrate really well together, this is the method that I use and it works best for me. If you use a different method that you think is better, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. If you have any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see, let me know as well. If this video was somewhat useful, I suggest that you subscribe as I'll be talking about more interesting and exciting contact scripting things in the future. If you'd like to download some free libraries, feel free to visit my website, ivyaudio.com. As always, I hope this video has been somewhat useful, and thanks for watching.